Hey guys, Casey here. Welcome back to uh, Lions Den Investments and Reviews. I uh, got an exciting video for you today. Um, today's video is going to be specifically about Theta. So, for all you guys that are watching the channel right now that are Thetans, and I say Thetans uh, because you know we're warriors, okay? We're 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 not Spartans. People need to get that right. We're not Spartans. We're Thetans, and uh, you know we're invested in this project heavily. A lot of us are. And uh, we've got diamond hands. We're not letting go of this project. And there's there's a serious reason as to why we're doing that. Um, but if you watch the AMA, uh, which took place here on the 24th, uh, let me know your thoughts on what you guys think about that interview. Um, also hit the like button if you guys watch that by any chance. Because what I'm going to do here is just basically go over and summarize the AMA event and cover some of the stuff they talked about, especially from like J.E. J. Long. Um, when it comes to the uh, the protocol and the Ethereum adapter uh, that they're going to be using with NFTs, making that compatible uh, with the Ethereum network. So, just getting into uh, today's video here, uh, let's go over to the technical charts real quick because I want to show you Theta and T Fuel. Now, I know Mitch Lou said in the AMA event that they are not concerned with price fluctuation, and if he's not concerned with it. I, by all means, am not concerned either because I'm staking my Theta and T Fuel right now. I don't know if you guys are. Leave a leave a comment in the comment section if you're staking as well. Um, but let's get into the technical analysis here real quick because right now Theta is at 6.49, T Fuel is at uh, 42 cents. Um, and you know, yesterday, if you watched yesterday's video, I was talking about Bitcoin and you know how it's the dominant crypto and it's affecting the overall markets and i told everybody that we were going to get rejected more than likely around this uh, downtrend here and then come down that's really all i need i wanted to point out here on bitcoin today because today's video is not about bitcoin it's about theta um but because of that it is taking theta down with it okay even though we have a main net 3.0 right around the corner here um in a matter of five days uh, it's you know right now we've got a, a pattern that I spotted here which is a, a double top pattern and that is a, a bearish signal um, but it doesn't always play out that way so just because you see a double top here all right in the in the patterns on the charts here for the daily doesn't necessarily mean that the price is going down any further so if we take a look at the uh, Fibonacci retracement that I have mapped out here, um, you can see we're holding support right now at the uh, 0.618, um, and we've got the uh, the weekly support, uh, this weekly support line from here to here. You know, if you follow my mouse, and you know we could definitely bounce off of this and head higher. So we're still in that range zone right now between nine dollars and ninety four cents, or ten dollars roughly. Uh, and five dollars and ninety seven cents guys honestly like I said I'm not worried about price fluctuation here if we do decide to go lower in price uh, I'm gonna tell you guys you know what I'm doing and this is not financial advice but I would just be backing up the truck and loading up on more theta and T fuel okay uh, but let's go back here this is the uh, link that was provided for the uh, AMA event. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go back and watch it for yourselves. But let's get into it here. Uh, the AMA event, basically, uh, I've got about three pages of notes here that I'm gonna cover uh, because it was a, about an hour and 15 or an hour and 20 minute video, so it was pretty long. A lot of people don't have patience to sit in and, and watch the whole thing. So I'll just summarize it for you and let you know what they were talking about. Um, and this was the Q&A. Uh, Mitch Liu was asked about the uh, partnership with CAA, right? So if you guys remember, CAA partnered up with Theta for celebrities, and uh, and they've got a whole clientele of celebrities. But they were talking about the uh, NFTs with celebrities because, as you know, there's a lot of people, uh, celebrities that are coming out with their own F NFTs now, like Eminem, Jay Z, um, you know, the list goes on basically, but. Mitch Lou was saying basically that they're they're focusing on celebrity NFTs with Theta at the moment. Um, he didn't really give any details as to when that's going to be released, but they are in the uh, in the works with that. Um, 
And they were also talking about T fuel payments for Edge Node are still in effect for July after Mainnet 3.0. So you're still going to get your rewards if you're uh, staking T fuel through an Edge Node or you plan on staking T fuel through uh, something like G Pool. And speaking of G Pool, guys, real quick, I'm going to take you over here to my site. Um, if you're interested in knowing how to stake uh, Theta or T fuel, I've got a, uh, if you go to my website, academyofcrypto.com, I'll leave a link in the description below. But if you go over here to market tools and then staking cryptos for rewards and then passive income with gpool, theta blockchain, okay, I've got an, an entire instruction guide here, manual, walking you through how to go ahead and set up an edge node. And there's also a video uh, right up here that I did that shows you how to basically set up and stake your uh, theta with gpool so you can go ahead and check that out if you want um, but moving on here with the uh, AMA uh, Wes Levitt uh, answered a question on you know what their focus was for for building on the uh, developers community and basically he's in uh, EU right now which is the third largest startup location for blockchain hubs okay so he's right there in the in the middle of it all and he's focusing on building development community in Amsterdam and Berlin at the moment. Now, uh, moving forward, CTO uh, J.E. Long here, he was also talking about building Web3. Um, and this is an Ethereum adapter, uh, Web3 Ethereum adapter for PC API, which translates to uh, ETH format um, conventions right for protocols like on ERC 20 and the ERC uh, 721 protocol for for NFTs and Just to let you know what that entails. This is the ERC 721 protocol for uh, Ethereum and he's talking about the standards. Okay, so you've got required interface um, of the ERC 721 compliant contract and there's different functions and standards that are integrated into this protocol. Okay, so you got like balance of, owner of, transfer from, uh, transfer from again, proof to, get approved. You need all this within your token uh, along with uh, timestamps and events. And if you don't have those, then your token is not going to be compliant with the Ethereum blockchain. Okay, so what he was talking about here with the uh, Web3 ETH adapter was making sure that their adapter follows the conventions for that 721 protocol all right and this is going to make it easier to import ethereum projects into theta without making changes which is huge for ethereum developers especially you know because it relates to solidity and um you know if you're if you're a developer that's doing and working on projects and building on top of the ethereum blockchain i know right now for myself I've got a project that I'm working on um, that's building on top of the Ethereum blockchain and it's in Solidity and we follow those standards for ERC-20 protocol and the ERC-721. So just you know, having a basic understanding of, of being a developer on Ethereum blockchain, I can tell you that's really exciting because you don't have to relearn or reinvent the wheel when it comes to the protocol conventions All right, as a developer. So, that's really exciting because it's going to spark all sorts of creativity and innovation uh, from developers who are working on the Ethereum blockchain. And let's say they create an Ethereum project, right? They're going to be able to use the Ethereum ad uh, API adapter that Theta is launching and move their project right over onto the Theta blockchain and vice versa. Anybody doing stuff with Theta will be able to do the same and move it over onto the Ethereum blockchain. So um, revolutionary in my opinion. I don't think there's really any other blockchain out there that is doing that. I know there's some cross-chain compatible blockchains like Polkadot um, that allow similar features, but this, this is going to be interesting to see where this goes. Um, if you like that news, hit the like button because I can tell you right now, if anybody comes up with something new on the development side that's going to help benefit Ethereum and Theta, uh, Theta is going to take off. You know. Um, they're also putting out a new white paper, guys, and this is for their own new ecosystem. Uh, Mitch Lee was talking about basically, you know, it's coming out here in a couple months from now, 
And then uh, in the spring of 2022, uh, their goal is to have the Ecosystem 1.0 launched. So that's exciting as well. He also was talking about uh, if you're curious about partnerships, you know, what, what further par partnerships are coming out on Theta. They're going to have some coming out here in about three to four weeks. So get ready for some more partnership announcements from Theta on that. Um, let's get into the patent update real quick. And so if we go over here to Twitter, you guys know that they came out with a new patent that was approved for uh, DRM, uh, DRM, data uh, or digital rights management via NFTs, right? And that's from the Theta Network right there on Twitter. So basically what they were talking about here was applying NFTs as a virtual ticket. So you could do like a VR for concerts, essentially. And you would have a virtual ticket. And that ticket is in the form of an NFT, which represents the digital rights management. Um, this also goes alongside with like fan engagement. Uh, for say like auctions for promoted films. So if you got films that are, you know, being released, excuse me here guys, if you got if you got films that are being released, um, and let's say they haven't actually been released to the public yet and they go on an auction, people can get in, you know, the first one hundred people for for instance could could buy the uh the film pre released through an NFT and uh, it just offers more of a way for these big conglomerates in the uh, media and entertainment to make some money by selling a pre-release of the, the film and then giving the, the ownership rights over to that person. So um, it's a unique, unique way of looking at uh, the entertainment business as a whole moving forward. Um, now this also protects ownership of content and Mitch Lee was saying that, you know, basically the the issue they've been having is not really an issue. It's more uh, of a concern for like their large partnerships with these media entertainment companies is that they've got licensed video content, right? And they want to protect that. And so one of their big concerns or interests was get for guys like Lionsgate and MGM was that licensed video content. And this gives them a way to do that so that these big conglomerates are protected. Um, they also went. They also went in over fee changes. Uh, they talked about staking, and one of the questions was, you know, if if they could change the the parameters on minimum T fuel staked because you're gonna need ten thousand T fuel uh, at minimum to stake on Theta blockchain. And they said they may change the parameters at a later date for that, but they don't have any anything set in stone right now. Uh, moving on. They also talked about, uh, somebody asked the question, how will a cross-chain bridge between ERC-20 tokens and native Theta tokens look in practice, right? Um, Mitch Lou went on to say it allows Theta to interact with Ethereum-based uh, markets for NFTs, such as uh, Rail Rarible.com and OpenSea and, and vice versa. Uh, this creates a whole new realm of application possibilities within NFT marketplaces. So uh, they've got a lot of focus on the NFT marketplace and what they're doing, I can tell you firsthand from just a developer's perspective, is revolutionary. revolutionary. There's no other NFT companies that I know of that are doing what they're doing with the NFTs. Um, Mitch Liu's goal for 2022 was global adoption. Um, and they asked, you know, what what stage do you feel that you're at right now in this in you know getting the global adoption? And he said, basically, it feels like it's you know 1998, 1999 internet. Um, they said on a scale from one to ten, when it comes to maturity stage for theta, where do you think they are? And guys, listen to this. This is coming from Mitch Liu. He said the maturity stage for theta right now is at 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 in his opinion. So if that shows you where they're going with hyper growth in this project and where the prices are going long term, I mean, just based on, on prices right now, like $6.48, right? Uh, that should tell you where this thing's going. Um, so if you're concerned with like 100X growth, just keep that in mind, okay? And if you like that news, hit the like button as well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't and, and you're watching this for the first time. Um, now moving on here, they said, 
when do global corporations and validator nodes start implementing data into their product lines and services? That was a question from one of the stakeholders. Uh, Mitchley responded and said, it depends on the collaboration objectives. Uh, and then Wes Levitt even added that right now the validator nodes are being used as relationship builders, okay? And they're building confidence that way within the the internal corporate models um, for getting familiar with blockchain. And I can relate with this because, you know, I, I still have a day job and I work in corporations, uh, a very large corporation as an engineer. And just having the blockchain background that I do, you know, I have several issues when I'm talking to directors and stuff like that about improving our system management and workflow and I keep talking to them about you know taking a look at blockchain and you know most people are just completely oblivious to blockchain they have no idea what it is so uh, this is a way to introduce to corporations from Theta you know with getting familiar uh, you know on the technology side and actually you know maybe even using it a bit and getting comfortable you know sending transactions back and forth through uh, through blockchain addresses and, st and stuff of that nature so that's uh, that was a good point that Wes Levitt made on that, and I just thought I would take a note on it. Um, they went on and talked about the uh, two-factor authentication with Data Wallet. Uh, basically, you don't need uh, two-factor authentication with Data Wallet. Okay, it's non-custodial, so they don't have any plans on actually implementing that because that would mean Data is essentially taking over ownership over your wallet. So right now, if you have a Data Wallet. It's 100% yours. They're, they're also doing a NFT drop before Mainnet 3.0 release, guys. They're going to call it the uh, ThetaZilla NFT drop. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm trying to hear if there's any more news on that or if you guys have heard something, let me know. You know, Leave a link in the comments. Let us know where we need to go for that. I'm guessing it's probably going to be on the NFT marketplace or they'll do it through Theta TV. Um, but I'm not sure. So if you guys have heard anything, let me know. Uh, T Fuel staking rewards for Mainnet 3.0. Somebody asked how often uh, you get rewarded, and basically it's based on random uh, randomized process, which uh, is based on dates for rewards, and they do this through specific snapshots on the blockchain. So basically, it depends on you know that and how much you have staked because uh, Theta is a proof of stake combined with like a Byzantine fault tolerance uh, consensus algorithm. And so proof of stake, guys, you gotta remember the the one flaw with proof of stake as opposed to say delegated proof of stake is that proof of stake, uh, it's basically the rich get richer. So the more money you have thrown into staking uh, with the Theta blockchain as of right now, the more you're gonna earn, okay, when it comes to T-Fuel staking rewards. So just keep that in mind. Um, oh, here is something else that was pretty pretty interesting, and I like this too. Uh, Theta Labs will not be staking their own T fuel, nor the validator nodes. Okay, so it's basically just for the community, and because of that, we don't have to compete with those guys uh, when it comes to T fuel rewards. So that's that's a good sign, um, especially because that's going to keep the percentage of T fuel staked at a lower uh, a lower percentage. The lower that percentage is, the higher payout you get in T-Fuel. So as more people stake their T-Fuel, that reward over time is going to come down. Um, they also talked about the patents again. Um, and somebody asked, do they protect data from competitors? And <laughs> Mitch Lou said, basically, this is not the intent to protect against competitors, but it does do that. And Theta does not want to use them aggressively against competitors. That was word for word what Mitch Lou said. Um, he said the goal is to lead the space and add credibility when dealing with clients and partners. Uh, if competitors infringe on patents, Theta will not hesitate okay, to protect themselves. So those patents, right now they've got four, four patents. Um, he was talking about, you know, here in the future, um, you know, they the one of their one of their goals is not really set in stone, but he would like to see like a hundred to a thousand patents through Theta at some point. So he's I'm here's what I'm trying to say. Just because they have four patents, he's not satisfied. And I like that. So 
uh, on the NFT side, you know, basically right now what they're doing here with the NFTs, it's it's a little bit different from Rarible and OpenSea because Rarible and OpenSea NFT marketplaces are more directed towards like uh, artists, traditional artists and artwork, uh, digital artwork as well. Uh, they just taken a different approach and they're working with content creators, okay? People like on YouTube, for instance. So if you go to Theta TV, you're creating videos. Uh, they're going to be working with, with these content creators making videos on NFTs. And that's the biggest difference between that and, say, traditional artists uh, that you might see out there on the NFT marketplace like uh, Rarible.com and OpenSea. Um, but here, if you're a traditional artist, keep this in mind too, guys. Because if you're a traditional artist, and let's say you get a business model built up around providing a service through your artwork, uh, you can still do that with Theta because these content creators are going to need images so that um, they can still use, you know, they're going to need an image for their NFT. And so because of that, they can still use a traditional artist. So if you're a, tra a traditional artist right now who's got a service and you provide artwork services for people, keep that in mind, okay? Because you can still utilize the NFT network and the the marketplace there for your own artwork. Uh, these content creators are still going to need some type of an image to put up with their NFT so they can engage with, uh, you know, like their followers and their fan base. Um, the last thing they talked about here, guys, was, uh, you know, basically moving platforms that are associated with like decentralized finance over and on a Theta blockchain because it's going to be Ethereum compatible now. And he mentioned, Wes Levitt mentioned bringing Aave over and that decentralized platform on a Theta uh, because I guess a developer or somebody like that was talking to him about that when he was over in, in the EU. And he basically, what I like about Wes is he threw out a challenge and came up with the idea uh, right there on the live AMA uh, live stream. And he was saying that you know, their their thought was basically during the next Theta Hackathon to go ahead and provide that as a challenge to the developers to see if they can actually demo, bring in the Aave and a decentralized platform over onto the Theta blockchain. So if they can end up pulling that off in a hackathon, uh, that's going to be huge too because that will introduce decentralized finance uh, to the Theta blockchain. And you guys, if you're familiar with decentralized finance, you know where that market cap's going. Um, I've talked about it in my videos several times, and if you're not familiar with it, go back and watch some of the video, videos that I talk about, uh, you know, with market caps and decentralized finance. Um, the last thing I want to end with here on the, the AMA event, because this pretty much wraps up the summary on it and what they talked about, is hyper growth. Again, Mitch Liu was talking about the adoption right now is right around the corner, guys. Okay, I don't know if that's, you know, six months from now or maybe one or two years but uh, he's not worried about market fluctuations and the price of theta. And because of that, I'm not either. I'm just staking. I'm in this for the long term. And uh, let me take you over here real quick to Theta TV because that wraps up the summary. Um, this is Theta TV. I'll leave, I'll leave a link in the description below. But this is where you can go to kind of get familiar with what they're doing on the uh, NFT side for content creators. So basically right now down here, they're saying the uh, creator marketplace is coming soon. It hasn't been introduced, but if you got a Theta wallet, you can essentially right now go create your own uh, NFT token. And if you know Solidity programming, you can even introduce some uh, some use case onto the Theta TV for your, for your NFT tokens. Okay, so you can do that through the Theta uh, token mentor. But I'm still trying to get familiar with a lot of this technology on the NFT side for Theta because it is a little bit different from Rarible. I've used Rarible.com, created my own NFT there, but uh, I just got kind of a brief introduction to it. Uh, there's some guides out there as well that Theta offers. Uh, so they walk you through basically step by step how to create an NFT and deploy it to the Theta blockchain. Uh, so I'll be reading over that as well and trying to get more familiar with that stuff so I can answer questions and maybe shoot a few videos on it here at a later date. But uh, basically, that's all I've got for today's video, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. 
you know, if you're bullish on all this, again, hit that, uh, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well. And uh, like, like it, you know, even Mitch Lou's talking about price fluctuations, right? They're going to go up and down. But overall, the long-term long trend is going to be up, especially with projects like Theta. So with that in mind, have no fear, my friends. Have a great weekend, and uh, I will talk to you later.